As we mark American Heart Month, today we're digging into some key facts to know about cardiovascular disease and ways to reduce your risk. So joining us now is Sadia Khan, Dr. Sadia Khan, a preventative cardiologist and professor at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. Dr. Khan, good morning to you and thanks so much for joining us. Good morning, thanks for having me. Thank you. So heart disease is a leading cause of death in the US, but the risk is not the same for everyone. So which groups are disproportionately affected and why? This is such an important question. We know that different people experience risk for heart disease differently. Some of that may be related to your genetics. So some families have higher risk for having heart disease. But we also know there are other factors. For example, African Americans have some of the highest risk for heart disease. Mm -hmm. And they're not just hit the hardest, they also develop it earlier in life. Hmm. And why, why is that? I mean, are there any reasons that would point to that? There's been a lot of research trying to understand where these inequities or disparities come from. And there's probably a multitude of different factors, including different social factors. Mm -hmm. We know that where you live contributes more to your risk for heart disease than any other factor that there might be. The American Heart Association um, has a lot of information, of course, on their website. And there's a fact that 44% of women did not know or are not aware of the fact that heart disease is the number one killer uh, for women in the US. What is being done to raise awareness um, among women? Yeah, this is one of the things that I am super passionate about. You'll see I'm wearing a red yes. dress pin here, which is one of American Heart Association's leading signs to try to raise awareness. Mm -hmm. We know that heart disease is the leading cause of death for both women and men, but understanding that women experience heart disease differently. Mm -hmm. They experience events across their life differently, like menopause, which is a key time when risk for heart disease may increase, but many women are not aware of this. Mm, menopause could have an impact? That's really interesting. I didn't know that. And it's an important time when your health might be changing. A lot of people experience changes in weight, but they may also experience changes in blood pressure or cholesterol or diabetes risk that they're not aware of if they're not going to the doctor. Heart disease is also affecting more young adults. How young are we talking in this growing population and why might that be happening as well? This is one of the most concerning trends that we've seen. We're seeing younger and younger people coming in with high blood pressure, mm -hmm. high cholesterol, diabetes, heart attacks, and even in their 20s and 30s, mm -hmm. when we often don't think about our risk for heart disease at all. Hmm. And what do you tell them when they do come in with something like that? I mean, is there a way, there have to be ways to prevent this from happening or turn it around if it's going down a bad path? Absolutely. Everything we've been talking about has been kind of negative, but there's a lot of positives. We have a lot of treatments that can help prevent heart disease. So awareness is so important in being able to start on that journey towards better heart health and prevention. And what are some of the things that somebody can do just to better their heart health in their everyday life? Yeah, one of the things that's really important is that it, it's never too early to start focusing on heart health. Mm -hmm. So you asked how old are we seeing people? I think every single person should know what their heart factors are. And for this reason, the other pin that I'm wearing <laughs> is the American Heart Association's Life's Essential Eight. So this is a set of eight factors and behaviors that are important to your heart health. So specifically, what's your weight? What's your blood pressure? What's your cholesterol level? What's your diabetes risk as the clinical factors? And then the things you can do about it in terms of eating a heart healthy diet, getting enough activity, ensuring that you're getting a healthy amount of sleep, which is a really important one that we often don't talk about and avoiding smoking. The body seems to have a remarkable way of recovering from things and turning itself around when you include or incorporate some more of those positive lifestyle factors. Have you seen really positive turn turnarounds when people um, are taking better care of their health in those ways? Yeah, I think that's a really great point. I said it's never too early to start thinking about your heart health and it's never too late to start thinking about your heart health. Any of these changes can be really important and it can seem overwhelming to try to do all of them at once. So the most important thing is to try to pick one and get started with that first step. What's the first step? What do you think it should be? So I think it's really important whatever you think is the okay, most important okay. first step for you. But if it was going to be one thing, if I had to say one thing from here on out, 
kind of watching what you're eating, mm. especially sodium, is probably the biggest thing we can do. Okay, Dr. Khan, thank you so much for giving us some marching orders. And if you want some more facts and information, you can head to uh, about your heart health. You can head to the American Heart Association's website. There's plenty of advice and prevention and just important facts to know to add to what Dr. Khan just shared with us.